Thank you for, thank you for uh, giving me this opportunity. Um, uh, as far as uh, the, the references, so many people have given me suggestions. Mary has edited and helped me clarify the couple of sentences and um, a, a couple of ideas. So I'm gr very grateful for that. Um, and uh, as Peter said, the, the theme this week is called to life. Um, and this is kind of how I felt uh, also. I was asked to give the Sunday message. My first thought was that I didn't have much to offer. I am not a Bible scholar. Then after I slept on the idea, I remembered that I had all I had to do, as with everything, is to give my concerns to God. That's all I had to do. Just like this morning, I put a call out for people, please pray to help us get out the road, road today. I'd really like to come to church and get Oceana to work. Um, I just have to ask for prayer. Um, and actually, I wouldn't have even known our road got plowed. I didn't hear the plow. Um, but my neighbor called and uh, said, you know, you got plowed, you can go, <laughs> after I'd gotten stuck once. <laughs> Anyways, I prayed that this was something I could do in a meaningful, helpful way. And I know that God will guide me. I read the guidelines for speakers at Waters Mennonite Church. Then I prayed some more. I looked up the lectionary readings for this day. My internet was not working and I couldn't find my Bibles. I took that as a sign that it was time to pray again. When I was in town within cell phone service, I managed to order a recommended version of the Bible. There were four readings and to try to keep things simple, I chose two. In Psalm 130, the part that speaks to me is that God hears our prayers. In the Lazarus story, parts of verse 41 and 42, Jesus said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me. Truly, God does hear our prayers. I looked over the worship resources that shall be sent to me. The first week of Lent, Shelby and Mary made a lovely, uh, thought-provoking display up here, thought-provoking display, uh, highlighting the Lenten theme. There were partially formed figures made from clay, and just like the hymn we sung a little while ago, uh, God is the potter, he molds us. That we are all just, we, the clay shows that we are all just in the process of becoming the person God wants us to be. That mean, brings me to, uh, to go on a little tangent. I miss going downstairs with the children to do a little craft with them to make the scripture readings easier to understand and remember. We, are, uh, we all learn better by doing things. So I need Russell to bring out, uh, I mean Curtis to pass out some clay, <laughs> just so that you can have a little practice. You might want to uh, put, like make something or not, just squeeze it and feel like you're being molded um it could what you make could what you make could go on the altar thanks russell uh, they, they might be hard to open but i'm sure someone will help i was reminded of the direction the huddle group is going they are learning more about how god speaks to us that is called a prophetic ministry before that, there was a study about Kairos moments. Those are also the times when God speaks to us or somehow gives us a message about something he wants us to do. For me, Kairos moments often happen when a thought pops into my mind to do something. For example, I should phone a certain person. I should pray for a certain person or cause. There is something I should do. To have a Kairos experience, we need to be open to hearing God. Then we need to ask God as we pray to come to us. Tell him that we want to have a loving relationship with him. Give thanks for the many blessings he has bestowed on us. There's also criteria to, deter to determine what is a true Kairos moment, because sometimes, you know, we might, uh, th there could be a chance of uh, interpreting incorrectly. There should be nothing dangerous 
to any person, place, or thing with this, uh, the ideas we come up with. It's important to get the opinion of someone of faith before taking action. Prayer before acting is always the priority. We can all do this most important thing. That's prayer is the most important thing for all of us to determine our actions. And there are some people that can't get out and do as much, but they still pray. And I'm just so grateful that so many are here today. It is certainly not, thank you, Helga. Thank you, Aldine. <laughs> it is certainly not our job to judge anyone either. It isn't easy to differentiate between judging and assessing. On a day-to-day -day basis, we have to make many assessments and decisions. For example, where should I buy my groceries? Where is it safe to park my car? What should I do when someone in the parking lot approaches me and asks for money? The list of decisions, assumptions, and sometimes judgments goes on and on all day. It isn't hard to mix up these thought processes. Hoy gave us an example of this when he talked about the woman at the well. He said that Jesus didn't judge her. There was no mention of how she came to have had five husbands in the Bible. Clearly, it is likely that we have made an incorrect judgment about her. It was never our job to judge her in the first place. When Melanie and Joey came to talk to us about people experiencing homelessness, homelessness people experiencing homelessness, um, and uh, Mary helped edit, it, edit my, uh, my words here because uh, first I said to talk to us about homeless people, and they're people first, so it's people experiencing homelessness. Um, I hear that on the bus radio. They'll, when a bus breaks down, they'll say, how many chairs and how many walkers, you know, and how many people with chairs and how many people who can walk. Um, uh, we all have experiences and abilities. I came to realize that I could have been making incorrect judgments on strangers and showing unchristian behavior by ignoring them and not even acknowledging their presence. At Children's Time, the storybook that Peter read about homeless people, and see, I haven't corrected that, yet about people experiencing homelessness really highlighted this. That led to further discussion with Peter after church. I told him that Oceana had said that at school she was told not to talk to people she didn't know or who seemed kind of sketchy. I felt confused as to what to do. Peter said it was important to acknowledge their presence as much loved children of God. Of course, we shouldn't go with anyone we don't know. Up to that point, I didn't realize how rude and inhumane I was being by ignoring people who asked for handouts and just not even looking at them. I didn't know what their true circumstances were, and I should not judge them. I do know that God loves everyone, no matter what their circumstances or choices. Joy pointed out that making a change for a more positive life takes as long as it takes, and it is not our job to judge people who are less fortunate and making poor choices or different choices. Um, this brings me to the second craft of the day. It's at the back. Um, I ordered some cactus seeds to show the, to, for the craft. Uh, cactus seeds are very slow to germinate and grow. Unfortunately, they're slow to arrive also. <laughs> for now, we have some little flower pots and lettuce seeds that we can plant uh, and we can watch how slowly they grow. Um, hopefully, uh, Amazon tells me that they're going to arrive tomorrow. I hope so. <laughs> so maybe next week. Um, but I, and so th those little flower pots, we can pot up a few uh, seeds in the little pots at the back table there. I've got a towel so I don't spill too much dirt. Um, I did have a positive change story to tell you. In a conversation with Elizabeth Archer from the Elgin Street Mission, I told her that a group from our church had partnered with another church in Lively to make meals for the homeless people that were at the motel next door to our church. 
this was just a beginning of their um, of their mission. They've, they're expanding it in a really nice way to include everyone. Elizabeth told me that she had been visiting a lady who was staying at the motel last summer next door to us. She had good news that now the lady is off drugs and doing well in her own apartment. That was the first we knew that the lovingly prepared home cooked meals and prayers may have made a small influence on someone. Another outreach project also had a positive outcome. Melanie told Krista that the Valentine cookies and cards that were lovingly prepared here also brought big smiles when they were delivered to people uh, less fortunate on the street. The way I met Elizabeth, most people call her Liz, through a friend of mine who was going to help serve supper at the Elgin Street Mission. The mission is always needing volunteers and I went with her to see what it was about. It was a very good experience to meet people, many of whom uh, have are experiencing homelessness and who needed a warm meal and just like everyone else needed friendly conversation, love and respect. I met some lovely people that I, I feel anyone would want to know and be proud to know. I love feeding people and Liz didn't have enough volunteers on another day, so I planned to volunteer again. This time, my friend couldn't go, so I called around for someone to go with. I wasn't too comfortable going alone in that part of town by myself. I needn't have worried about my safety. Katya, Krista, and Strawn offered to come with me. When I couldn't remember where the right door was, because I, uh, I was in my friend's car and I was at the back of the building, uh, people waiting to eat in line were kind and helpful. Some even said thank you for volunteering. I feel, felt like these people were becoming my friends. It turns out that some of the area churches and businesses volunteer regularly at the Elgin Street Mission or perhaps the Blue Door Cafe. Um, so I'm going back uh, Saturday, April 15th and 29th. If anyone wants to come and help me make a Team Waters, let me know. It could be a way to fulfill the out part of the in, out, up triangle that we heard Art talk about. We, it, it's a way of us getting out of the church and showing our faith. Um, it's only a three hour commitment, once or twice a month. We don't all have to, to volunteer. I hope most of us will pray. The most important thing is to pray for the less fortunate. We can do that wherever we are. I hope that volunteering always remembering that prayer comes first is a start on my way to put into action a changed attitude. And that's the theme for Lent, um, is letting God mold us and change, help us grow. Thank you. And uh, afterwards, I'll get the, the pot, flower pots out if anyone wants to bring a little flower pot of lettuce home. <laughs>